uh, hello guys thanks for being here i am dr praveen i am a general surgeon based out of chennai i i am working in the team called curium life technologies we are striving towards incorporating artificial intelligence into the operating room uh, so you know we work in collaboration with iit madras with the department of engineering design and i thank professor gk sir for this opportunity so our aim is to minimize surgical errors and to ensure safe surgery so moving on to the topic what intraoperative tissue identification is so the word intraoperative means that uh, things that happen during the surgery during the course of surgery so during the course of surgery it is vital for the surgeon to correctly identify the tissue only correct tissue identification can help the surgeon decide what to cut and what not to cut what to take out and what not to take out so let us take the example of uh, gallbladder surgery we know gallbladder is an organ which is a pear pear shaped organ pear shaped organ which is present in the under surface of the liver so this is the liver we have the gallbladder on the under surface of it people tend to form stones inside the gallbladder and the only procedure that is available for the treatment is removal of the gallbladder which is called cholecystectomy so this gallbladder has two connections to it one is a cystic duct and another is a cystic artery and there is something a vital structure called the bile duct which is running alongside the gallbladder so if you want to remove the gallbladder you need to clip it here you need to disconnect this gallbladder from the cystic duct and cystic artery and remove this off you are not go uh, you are not supposed to go and meddle with the common bile duct this is the common bile duct if at all some injury happens to the common bile duct by mistake if it is identified during the course of surgery it is correctable but if it is identified only in the post operative period then it is really a catastrophic event so we can involve artificial intelligence and machine learning for the uh, surgeon to correctly identify whether he is going near the bile duct or not experienced surgeons won't have a big problem in dealing with this but this is especially useful for beginner surgeons uh, so correct intraoperative tissue identification will need uh, good experience from the surgeon side dissection skills of the surgeon and also sound anatomical knowledge so let us deal with one example so this is an intraoperative picture of a uh, gallbladder removal surgery which we call cholecystectomy so this is the organ which we are going to remove it and this is where the cystic duct goes and this is where the cystic artery goes so in this particular surgery the dissection has been done quite done in a quite clean manner we don't get to see this common bile duct anywhere else so the surgeon can very well cut it off here and take the organ out let us take another example this is one another uh, picture of the same cholecystectomy surgery we have the gallbladder which is over here the cystic duct here is very short and the short cystic duct while operating the, the surgeon tends to pull the cbd here the common bile duct here so we are not supposed to go near the common bile duct anywhere during this gallbladder surgery and there are high chances that a beginner surgeon who is just starting his career in surgery can very well consider this structure to be the cystic duct go near it clip it and cut off here so this is the major uh, idea behind uh, using artificial intelligence in intraoperative tissue identification so the this uh, in this case study uh, they have published it in the journal called artificial intelligence surgery in the month of 2020 in the month of august in 2021 uh, there are a group of surgeons and technical ex experts from mexico and germany uh, where they have used an, a novel optical imaging technology which is called hyper hyperspectral imaging you guys would have been knowing about it so this is a brief uh, intro, intro about what hyperspectral imaging is so it combines the technology of a digital photographic camera with the help of a, along with a photospectrometric unit that is spectrographic unit so we have light which is falling on an object the object tends to reflex it and there are uh, uh, all the reflected uh, signature of the light which gets uh, off from the object tends to fall under various regions in the, the electromagnetic spectrum so this uh, spectrographic unit tends to collect all the scattered light as a signature tends to resolve resolve it into an entire electromagnetic spectrum starting from the uv ir and so on and it tends to do a, a th three dimensional three dimensional spatial resolution 
three dimensional spatial resolving. The main catch behind this, this is totally non-invasive, radiation free and it is a very user friendly technology. So this allows for a contactless and non-destructive biochemical analysis of living tissue. Living tissue, each living tissue will have its own spectral properties which is being utilized here. So for example, a blood vessel, uh, let us take uh, the example of a liver, the gallbladder in the, in the liver surgery, the liver, the spectral uh, property of a liver is due to the uh, thing called blood which is flowing in it and the spectral property of the common bile duct and the gallbladder is due to the bile which is a substance which is inside it. So each tissue in the human body will have different spectral property which is being utilized in this technology. So uh, we, they do qualitative and quantitative snapshots of the biological tissues chemical properties. So let us see this. So this is the uh, total electromagnetic spectrum we have UV, visible light, infrared and uh, mid infrared spectrum. And uh, the one ones which are mentioned here shows the data set which they have derived with the help of different uh, image capturing technologies which is monochrome, trichrome, RGB, multispectral and the hyperspectral. And the one data set which we have get from the hyperspectral imaging is what is called a hypercube. This is called a hypercube. So the series here in C, they describe how these uh, hyperspectral imaging devices collect data actually. So the goals of this study is they have taken two medical conditions that is one is gallbladder surgery and the next one is liver surgery, I mean uh, thyroid surgery. So gallbladder surgery we have just spoken on it. Uh, thyroid surgery, thyroid gland is something which is present in front of your neck. So during the thyroid surgery there is something called the parathyroid glands. So this is the thyroid gland which is present in front of your neck. There is something called the parathyroid glands which is present on the back of the thyroid glands and the surgeon is not supposed to remove the parathyroid glands during surgery. So if the surgeon tends to remove the parathyroid gland along with the thyroid gland during surgery then the patient is doomed to develop abnormalities in the levels of calcium there will be low blood calcium levels in his post operative period for which he need to be supplemented with uh, parenteral or oral calcium supplements. So this is how they do it. They collect hyperspectral imaging data from 7 liver surgery patients. I mean they mean to say it is gallbladder surgery patients and hy hyperspectral imaging data from 7 thyroid surgery patients and they use the tissue hyperspectral imaging system from a German brand for uh, collection of hyperspectral data and this system which is shown in this image uh, gives a spatial resolution of about 640 cross 480 pixels and a spectral resolution of about uh, 5 nanometers in the electromagnetic uh, wavelength ranging from 500 to 1000 nanometers. So what they do, they, uh, the, the data which is collected, the hyperspectral image, this is what is shown here, the one on the left that is uh, the picture A, they show where the liver and the bile duct is. Surgeons are involved here in the annotation of this data, they are not doing a semantic segmentation or a complete manual annotation of the entire thing, but they are just allowed to label. So this part is liver and one over here is also the liver and this is where the bile duct lies. So this is for the thyroid surgery. This is the entire thyroid gland which is shown and the muscles in the neck are shown over here and this is where the parathyroid gland lies. So they have not done uh, complete annotations of it because it is extensively laborious task. So this is how they pre-process the data, they remove the out layers first, they uh, develop a system for uh, foreground uh, identification of structures which are present in the foreground and they ignore the background things. And spectral smoothing is done, data normalization is done and dimensional reduction and spatial smoothing is also done. Let us see each one of them. So this is outlayer removal. So there are many factors that affect the spectral pattern of tissues. One such factor is uh, lighting conditions in the OR. OR I mean to say here is the operating room. Some surgeons can operate with a very bright light on and some surgeons used to operate a, uh, with, with a mid brightness range. So uh, the spectral pattern of tissue can really change with the lighting conditions inside the operating room and it also depends upon the presence of blood in the tissues. During surgery there is a chance that blood gets spilled around in the field, surgical field and the presence of blood around the target area can also affect the spectral pattern of tissues. Uh, there can even be unintended 
mislabeled regions that introduce variability to the spectral patterns of the corresponding tissues. So, what they have done to remove this, I mean, the re to remove these are uh, these are uh, characteristics outliers. All these uh, things are considered as outliers. So, so, so they have done something called uh, statistical analysis to determine the reflectance spectra boundaries for the identification of outliers. What I mean to say here is that they have HSI data for uh, let us see for the common bile duct which is one of the target uh, tissues which they use HSI here for uh, they have uh, determined some upper wavelength for uh, common bile duct and the lower wavelength for common bile duct and only those uh, reflectance uh, images which they capture that belong to this wavelength range will be considered for processing and those that lie beyond these two are considered as outliers and they are removed. Oh, they use a similar thing for background identification. So, within the surgical field there can be the uh, there can be instruments, the hands of the surgeon which get inside that. So, to reduce the number of irrelevant region they call these as irrelevant regions. So, to reduce the number of irrelevant regions falsely detected by a segmentation method along with the tissues of interest. Uh, for this they also define the set of boundaries that works as a threshold for the reflecting spectra of the rel relevant uh, features. This image shows that so, uh, for example, to identify the liver they have an upper boundary reflectance spectra for the up upper boundary for the reflectance spectra and the lower boundary and only those in between these are considered for the processing the data. Similar thing is carried out for the thyroid surgery also. So, this is one such example. So, the series under A shows the HSI images. and one in this B shows how the pre-processing is done to remove the background data, I mean the background images. The surgeon's hands are over here and these are removed here and we have the instrument here, we have the instrument here and that is being removed here at this place. The next step in the data pre-processing is spectral smoothing. Uh, I think you people will be knowing better than me. So, it is uh, they use something called the savitsky golay smoothing operator to reduce the noise which is introduced by distant factors during the acquisition of reflectance spectra. And uh, the final thing they use is uh, the principal, comp principal component analysis to for a dimensions uh, for reduction of the dimensions and spatial analysis. So, for tissue segmentation they have used 7 algorithms to check 1, 2, 3 based on the logistic uh, regression. LR L1, LR L2 and LR elastic net and 2 the support vector machine which has uh, linear basis function and a uh, ray rail basis function also. And the multi, multi layer perceptron and finally, the con usual convolutional network which is called the unit. So, they evaluate the uh, functions of those uh, algorithms with the help of 3 metrics, I mean 4 metrics which is accuracy, recall, precision and F1. We know that F1 is something uh, an average of the recall and uh, precision. So, this is how they describe your uh, results. So, this is the result of various models which, have, which they have uh, trained for uh, identifying gallbladder, portal vein, portal vein and bile duct in the case of liver surgery and they find unit to be having highest F1 score and performing much better than all the other uh, 6 algorithms which were described. And uh, this is uh, one such image. So, one in the series A shows the hyperspectral imaging data and uh, one in the series B shows how the tissues are getting segmented using unit. And this is for the thyroid surgery and for, th for the thyroid surgery uh, data they find that LR elastic net algorithm scores much higher over all other uh, algorithms. So, this is the HSI uh, series for the thyroid surgery A and this is how the tissue segmentation occurs. So, the parathyroid, uh, the thyroid gland is seen over here in green and the parathyroid, the regions where the parathyroid will be there is given in the blue. So, I think we are coming to the end of the session. So, this is just to give an intro that there is one novel Im optical imaging system which can even be used in intraoperative assistance. Uh, HSI is being used uh, to identify tumors in post operative uh, specimens. I mean uh, after the surgery we have the post operative specimen. In that specimen the, uh, whether the tumor is present or not for that HSA is being used and you people will be knowing HSA is also used in forensic medicine and many other uh, fields of science. But it is a potential uh, field that 
uh, in HSE can also come into play in interoperative assistance. Uh, they are using it sir, but they have not published it it seems, but they are using the similar technology for identification of perfusion. Uh, uh, during bubble surgeries, uh, uh, we have a disease, uh, they have a similar technology, but uh, even uh, they are using it. Uh, during this is the intestine actually. We have the blood supply to this intestine. We have a diseased thing which is happening here. To remove this, we need to cut it off. What happens is, we have two ends which needs to be attached to each other. This, this is the blood supply to the bowel. So, this is one end, this is the other end. So, when we stitch both ends together, the blood supply of the ends need to be perfect in order to get uh, for this to be successful. If the blood supply is not perfect, then this uh, we call it as anastomosis. This is bound to leak in the post op period. So, interoperatively, they check uh, the perfusion of the ends using uh, HSA. They have an extra attachment to the camera head, sir. So, whenever the uh, we remove the deceased bubble out, deceased intestine out, this they activate this mode in the camera. This camera will tell that the ends are well perfused or not, the ends of the intestine are well perfused or not. So so we can yeah we can revise this actually we if we find that this end is not uh, doesn't have a good blood supply we can even revise this end right. we can chop it off here because where it is joined that has to be have only if it has a good blood supply it will survive uh, these are the vessels so uh, there are tech <laughs> there are surgeons doing microvascular anastomosis sir or even we have an operating microscope. Operating microscope. So, using that, using that we have uh, an operator. And they say HSA has a very good role in this, sir. In this. Uh, at present, we have uh, the ICG technology which is there with the endocyanin green. We give the dye, uh, do a fluorescent imaging interoperatively, and just check whether the ends are perfused or not. If the ends are well perfused, then we go ahead with the surgery. If it is not perfused, then we need to revise the ends.